In this video, we're going to tie the fish skull super bugger. First thing I did was I added some lead wire to the shank of the hook. Now notice, I did not go all the way towards the eye. I left about three or four hook eye lengths of uh, bare hook shank. That is going to be room for our fish skull. We don't want to put uh, all that lead wire right up to the eye. It will build up a little bit too much. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to take our thread and we're going to wrap through this wire several times just to keep it secure, keep it from sliding back and forth and rolling on us. And none of this has to be pretty. This is all going to be covered up. So I usually just wrap through it with some nice big loose wraps. Then we come all the way to the back of the hook shank. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take two plumes of olive marabou and I'm going to even them up so that the tips of the plumes line up and we want to make our tail about the length of the straight portion of the shank of the hook and I just apply it to the top of the, the shank then I lay down half a dozen to a dozen nice tight wraps and I wrap all the way up to the wire and I'm going to stop just barely short of it. This will give me a nice smooth transition from the tail to the body. All I do is just trim out any of the excess right uh, in front of my lead wire. Then once I've done that I can cover it up there's my nice little transition. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some brassy wire. We're just going to lay this down on the side of the shank of the hook. Take it all the way back to the bend. And I'll take a few wraps forward. Then we're going to add just a hint of flash to this fly. I do that with two strands of pearl crystal flash. I'm just going to apply this to each side of the hook. And then we can trim that crystal flash. I usually like it just a hair longer than my tail. And the next thing to do is we're going to take some medium woolly bugger chenille and matching color to the fly. This one's olive. And I'm going to take my thread forward and I'm going to leave it about two hook eye lengths from the eye of the hook. Now the next thing to do is to take our chenille and all we're going to do is we're going to wrap a even body with it. one wrap right in front of the other. And the reason I'm going to stop just a little bit short is because we want this fish skull to fit over like so. And if I go too far forward I'm going to run out of room and I won't be able to uh, slide that fish skull. And I just secure the, the chenille. Now the next thing to do is take a piece of schlappen in the uh, matching color. I'm using olive. We're going to tie it in so that the natural curve of this feather faces back. I don't know if you can see that there, but the curve of that feather is all laying back. I don't want that feather curve to be facing forward. Trim out the stem. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this slap in and I'm going to do my first wrap right up front here. And then I'm going to take it, I'm going to get out my hackle pliers here. This usually makes things a little easier. Take that first wrap right up front. Then I'm going to just kind of slowly 
spiral the schlappen back. And I like this schlappen because it's a very webby material. Once we get all the way to the back, we're just going to take our wire. We're going to counter wrap. We're basically wrap forward through all this schlappen. And I kind of wiggle the wire. That helps keep you from trapping any of the fibers. And I'm basically every wrap back I made with the schlappen, I'm making one wrap forward with the wire. So I'm just kind of cross crossing each of those wraps that I made with the schlappen. Once we get up to the front, I'm going to pull the schlappen back out of the way, tighten the wire and capture it. Then you can either cut the wire out. I usually like to pull tight on my thread and spiral the wire out of there. And then I like this schlappen to lay back, so I just stroke it back and coax it back a little bit. If there's any wild fibers, you can pluck them out of there. Now the last thing we need to do is fit the skull. And this skull needs a little bit of a thread base to bind down on. If you don't have a thread base, the skull doesn't have anything to glue to. So what we're going to do is we're just going to try to fit the skull. And right now it's very, very loose. I uh, don't have enough thread wraps under there to give that skull something to glue to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up a little tapered cone. It's going to be thin near the eye. Then it'll get thicker as we get back towards the uh, towards the schlappen and the hackle. Go with a little more here. And once I've got a nice little <clears throat> base built up, we're ready to whip finish. I just usually do a two or three turn whip finish right up by the eye. We're gonna super glue all this anyways. So the next thing to do is to take some Zappa Gap. I like to use the brush. It's just easier for me to, to deal with. And we're gonna apply a generous amount of super glue. all the way around this entire head. And I usually give it a second for it to seep in. And then I'll just kind of keep applying more. Once we've done that, we're going to apply our fish skull. You want the keel of the fish skull to face down. That little rounded part faces down. And I place it on, and I'm going to push it back onto the material. And once it's on there, it's on there for good. You see that schlappen poking out of the head of the fish skull? That's exactly what I want. Then the last thing to do is apply the eyes. Your fish skull package comes with eyes. So all you're going to do is you're going to wipe the majority of the glue off the tip of the brush of your Zappa Gap. And we're just going to put a little dab of it right in the eye well. Then we're going to take our fish skull eye and I usually kind of like to slide them into place. Just like that. And then you'll pinch it, push it on it, count to 20 or 30 seconds or so. It wasn't 30 seconds but I'll just risk it here and Hope it stays place. That way you're not waiting for 30 seconds on the video. I'll do the other one here. This 
same thing, just put on the eye and I just kind of slide it into that eye well. Once it's in there, then you can pinch them both together and again, pinch down, hold for 30 seconds, but I won't bore you with watching super glue dry. But that is the Fish Skull Super Bugger. Very heavy, lifelike streamer pattern. Very similar to a Conehead Wooly Bugger. This one just has a little bit uh, heavier eyes on it. And one thing you can do with all these fish skulls, if uh, you feel like you didn't super glue good enough or all the way and you're afraid it might slide forward, Fish Skull actually recommends you do this. With this down eye, makes it kind of tough. So I'll just take my vise here and adjust the angle up a little bit. You can tie in right at the front of the fly and you can build up a, a, a thread dam behind the eye in front of your fish skull and this will prevent the uh, fish skull from sliding forward. It just makes them a lot more durable. I usually add pretty generous amount of uh, super glue to the inside of my fish skulls. I haven't had too much of an issue of them coming off. That little thread dam will help it and make it much more durable. That is the fish skull super bugger. You can find all the materials for this fly on our website in the riffle.com. If you're watching this via YouTube, there is a link below this video in the description that you can follow to the recipe and uh, buy the, the materials for this fly. And that is the fish skull Super bugger.